Hey everyone, my name is Benj Heish, and today we are going to be comparing my personal GFX 50S with the newly announced GFX 50S 2 talking about the differences both in feel with the internals and in practice what all of the things kind of like mean to an actual photographer and whether or not I am going to be upgrading from the 50S to the 50S2 and whether you should or not. And right off the bat, just wanted to say a special thanks to Fujifilm and Moment for providing this camera for me for the sake of review. I have made a first impressions video of the 50S2 as well as the 35 to 70. Um, and I was planning on making some more videos about the original 50S, as well as this Miticon or Mitocon 65 1.4, which has kind of been my main kit right here. Um, I will put links to all of this stuff in the description down below if you're interested in pre-ordering this kit. So right off the bat, these are medium formats. And by medium format, you're gonna get a lot of people that are going, it's not actually 645. Um, but it is a 44 by 33 millimeter sensor, which is still significantly larger than full frame. It is a 50, or I believe actually 51.4 megapixel sensor. Now this 50S is I believe four years old now, um, but this new 50S2 actually shares the exact same sensor. So from a sensor standpoint and from an image standpoint in that way, you're gonna be getting the same performance out of both cameras, but there's definitely a lot of other differences to consider uh, if you are thinking of either upgrading or purchasing one of these in the first place. So we will start with the bodies. Um, you can definitely see that there are some fairly significant differences here. Um, I don't know how easy it is to see, but the main thing being this giant bump out on the 50S which is now removed and they've just taken the exact same body from the 100S and they're using it for the 50S2, which I think is a fantastic idea. It's probably a cost saving measure as well, just to be using the same body for both, which then hopefully is going to be given to you and me, the consumer, uh, which is the thing about this is this body comes in at $4,000 where I believe this was like $5,500, $5,600 when it first came out. Um, and I mean, we're gonna kind of go out of order here, but we can jump into pricing. In general, the 50S was obviously much more expensive, but now on the used market can be found for significantly less money. Um, I know that they've been running sales on the camera for about $4,000 at times, which is what the new 50S2 is coming in at. Um, but on the used market, there's just a lot of them out there because it's just been around for a while. Now you can see that one of the things that they did on here um, was got rid of the functional dials, um, you know, the traditional dials with ISO and shutter speed, which I do really, really like. One of the things that I'm most bummed about the 50S2 is I like having my ISO, my shutter speed, and my aperture all controlled with easy you know dials or something like that so that i can just switch those really really fast uh on the 50s obviously i have the aperture here or i could set it to one of these dials uh the little scroll wheels but then i have the shutter speed right here and then you have the iso here it's not that big a deal i understand but on the 50S, you have to click one of these select buttons, these custom buttons, and then switch to ISO. Again, it's not the end of the world. It's definitely something I would get used to. Um, but in general, you know, I do still prefer those buttons, but I feel like I would just get used to that. One of the things that Fujifilm is really, really great at is allowing just lots of buttons to <laughs> exist. So, um, you know, you can see that a lot of these same buttons are in similar places. You have this Q button, you have a little joystick. Um, the new 50S2 as well as the 100S uh, are missing this little D-pad thing here, which like whatever, I use the joystick for most of this stuff anyway, so not that big a deal. 
Um, but you can definitely see there's a lot of similarities in uh, general. So if you're picking up the 50S2 versus or over the original 50S, you're definitely gonna feel like a lot of similarities between those two things. Now, moving on to some of the other internals. Um, because like the back screen is the same. One of the sort of, I guess not internal things, but the viewfinder here apparently is the same amount of, you know, dots and all that kind of stuff. I will say that the 50S2 felt like it was sharper. That might've been an actual just digital sharpening, but I did feel like as I was shooting at least that it was easier for me to grab focus manually than on the 50S. It's not like I haven't been able to grab focus on the 50S, but uh, it did feel slightly easier on the 50S too. I'm not sure exactly what's going on there, but just throwing it out there for sure. It was something I experienced. And then getting into the more main differences of internals and things that are going to be, I don't know, more important in practice and in practical use, the image processor, which is basically the brains of the camera, is updated from the 50S to the 50S2 with the X processor 4, I believe. Basically, they redid some of the autofocus algorithms and just that processor being, I think it might even be like a quad core. I think I saw someone post that. Um, but it is just definitely much faster. The menu's a little bit snappier. Startup time will not slow on the 50S. It's just like slightly improved on the 50S2. Image reviewing, menus, that kind of stuff is faster. But the main thing that I think a lot of people are going to be really interested in is despite the fact that they share the same sensor, meaning they're stuck with the same contrast, kind of detect autofocus, the autofocus is a little speedier. The readout of the sensor itself is much faster. So, and you know, just tracking and things like that are much better on here um, versus the 50S. In my experience in using uh, all of the, you know, the 50S, the 50R, the X1D2, the 907X, but in terms of those 50 megapixel sensors in these medium format bodies, it's definitely the best one I've used so far, while not amazing, but for landscapes, for portraits, for a lot of non-moving subjects uh, that are moving really fast, I wouldn't, as a wedding photographer, want to photograph you know, someone coming straight at me. I would use a different camera for that, a different setup. It's not meant for that. Um, so just kind of knowing the limitations of the camera are super important and the autofocus is definitely improved, but it's not like incredible yet. The other main difference that I found in practice was that the 50S2 has IBIS or in-body image stabilization up to six and a half stops, which means that you can shoot at much slower shutter speeds um, and get sharp results. And then I almost didn't even mention it, but the video settings are like all the same. It's 1080p, 30, uh, you're not getting log profiles. It's, you, you just don't wanna use it for video. So it's, unless you have to in a pinch, uh, if you are going to be doing any sort of serious video, uh, while it'd be fun, it's definitely just, yeah, just buy a video camera. So I think all that to say, there are a lot of really, really great updates, and I think the price point of this camera is fantastic. Now that, you know, prices have dropped on the original 50S and the 50R and stuff like that enough, you know, is it worth upgrading or just going straight into this camera? Here's kind of my thoughts on that. If you are tripoding things, if you are uh, shooting landscapes, that kind of stuff, products, whatever. I think the original 50S is gonna be more than fine. Uh, a lot of people are really bummed that they can't use their tilt screen thing here. Um, I don't have the tilt one, but it's kind of nice that you can get rid of that viewfinder and use a different one or just take it off, I guess, if you really wanted to, while the 50S2 is just built into the body, so you're not gonna get a tilt screen at all. And then the price differential, you know, buying one in the used market for like mid 2000s ish, um, or at least like, you know, around three, just depending on where you can find one and condition and everything like that, is still gonna be cheaper than buying this uh, new 50S2. But I will say 
if you are using any native autofocus glass, all of these cameras are just kind of a struggle to get good focus on actual autofocus lenses. So any improvement is going to be worth it. Currently, I am just using manual focus glass, but in the future, if I pick up maybe the 81.7 or the new 55 1.7 that they announced, which isn't coming out till 2023, and then this body at that point would definitely be worth it in those terms. I think the IBIS is great. Uh, I do prefer the body feel in this way. I'm still kind of torn about whether I'm going to be purchasing one of these or not. Because when I look at the images, especially, you know, just that I've taken on this camera versus this camera, at the end of the day, the images are the same because they have the same sensor. But I would say the experience of using the camera is definitely better on the new 50S2. It has the faster processor, it has IBIS. Um, and definitely if I'm using any sort of autofocus glass, it's kind of a no-brainer to go in this direction. But, you know, if you want to save some money, if you want to use manual focus glass, the 50S, uh, the original, is still a great buy. So, I'm still undecided about what I'm going to do. I definitely am leaning towards purchasing one of these, but we will see. Ugh, it's a, it's a tough one. But if you are interested in any of these things, I will put links in the description down below uh, to the 50S probably on like KEH or something. Uh, the Miticon you can buy straight off Amazon brand new for like, maybe like 650 bucks. Uh, and then I will put pre-orders to the kit here as well as the body or if you did want to buy the zoom lens. Uh, you could do that outright as well through Moment. And then if you are interested in any of these, I'm definitely gonna do a full review on this camera and lens uh, at some point. And then I just did a first impressions of the camera and the lens for the new 50S2 and the 35 to 70. So if you're interested in those, you can check them out here and here. So thanks so much again, and I will see you in the next one.